If you've been using Blender for a while, I'm sure you've probably encountered this problem. I have a box here that I've cut a load of cylinders out of, and I've added a nice bevel around the edge to give us some smooth edges. But the problem is, if I shade auto smooth this, we get all of this really horrible shading. Now, this is a really common problem, but it's actually very easy to solve once you know why it's happening. It's very easy to figure out what the solution is. So in order to figure this out, we need to talk quickly about normals. Uh, a normal is basically the direction that Blender is calculating a face to be pointing on average. So this one is going to have a normal pointing straight up, and this face is going to be pointing straight out. And actually, there's an overlay if we go into edit mode here, where we can turn this on, and we can see the normal direction, and you can see that it's all just based on the way that this one is pointing. Right, so that makes it very easy for us to calculate how to sh um, shade things in Blender. All we need to know is the direction of each face and the direction of the light source and the camera, and we can calculate the shading. That works great for something like a cube, but when we have a curved surface, we have this problem. You can see all of the individual faces because they're all shaded slightly differently. Now, a way that we can get around that is to use something called vertex normals. And what they basically are is they are a vertex direction which is based on the direction of the faces uh, that are adjoined to it basically so these ones are going off in a 45 degree angle because it's an average this one here is an average of this direction and this direction of the face normals so then what we can do is just take all of these vertex normals and we give it a nice smooth gradient that goes all of the way across and we basically ignore the hard corner and you probably know this, we just shade smooth and that works fine. Now, this is another problem if we have an object that has uh, curved surfaces and has hard edges like a cylinder, we get this. Blender's completely ignoring the fact that there should be a hard edge going all the way around there. So we have shade auto smooth, which basically just puts a limit on the angle. In this case, it's set to 30 degrees. Because this is a 90 degree corner, it's more than 30 degrees, so this face is not being affected by these faces around the side. So the problem that we have here is that basically we have this big face here. These are all, let's just turn this off. These are all engons, right? But they're all joined to loads of faces around the side, and all of these faces are going in different directions. So Blender's trying to create a gradient that goes from this direction, this normal over here, and there's this normal over here, and it's trying to create a gradient that goes all the way across that. But we also have them going off in all these other different directions, right? So there's no gradient that can satisfy that. So what happens instead is Blender ends up making these horrible transition lines make terrible shading on our models so one way that we can get around that easily basically the problem here is that this top face imagine this is the engon face it's been influenced by the ones at the side of it so if we can just split this up a little bit then that won't be an issue so we can just go into edit mode and let's just turn on the normals here for a second we can add a supporting edge here and now, if we do a gradient across this, you can see it stays flat, and then it only becomes a smooth transition once it reaches the corner. So that works pretty well in some cases, and the easiest way to do that on a model like this would just be to select one of these engons, and use Shift-G, core planar, to select all of this side, and then press I, and if we inset a little bit, you can see that's fixed our problem. Now, this isn't normally the method I would use because it's adding a lot of extra topology. All of these edges are probably gonna get in the way. And it means we have to do this every single time we have this shading issue. A second way of fixing this, which is a bit more automated, is to just select the faces again. And this time, if we go Alt N, set from faces, that basically adds a crease on the edges, which kind of tells Blender all of these parts in between the creases should just have one single shading. Don't try and make a gradient here and then just transition when you get to the corners. Now, that works pretty well a lot of the time, but personally, A, I don't like the look of this on the models where it's all these creased edges. And it's something that you have to continually do or undo 
all of the time when you're adding extra stuff to the model because it'll inherit the crease from the edges. Uh, if you want to clear that, by the way, if you just go to the data panel and then geometry data, you can clear the custom normals to get rid of it. Now, my favorite method is to use the magic modifier, the weighted normal modifier. It basically does the same thing, but it calculates all of that for you automatically. Right, so if we add that, you can see this has cleaned our model up perfectly. And we can keep modeling on top of this and I'll always recalculate everything nicely. Uh, we can also change the influence on this. So if you think you want to give more weight to one part or the other, you can just slide this around. Basically, all this is doing is it's looking at the size of the faces and it's saying if it's a really big face, just give it one level of shading. If it's a smaller face, then try and blend it in with its neighbors. Now, this problem is really commonly caused by the bevel modifier. In fact, it's so commonly caused by it that actually, if we go to shading, you can see that we have this hard normals option over here, which basically just does what the set faces thing did earlier on. It adds custom normals once the bevel is applied. Uh, the reason why this happens specifically with the bevel modifier, you can figure out quite easily by turning down the segments. You can see that we, uh, if we turn this off, we have the problem with three segments and even worse for two segments. But if we turn that off to one segment, so it's only cutting this one time around the corners, it disappears. And the reason before that is because of the angle of the bevel. When we bevel something, what we're really doing is just separating it up into smaller corners. So if we add one bevel, well, that's a 45 degree edge. And as we've already established, if we use auto shade smooth, it's going to ignore angles over 30 degrees. So if we only have one level of bevel, it's not going to make a difference to anything. But once we add two or three levels of bevel, you can see how it's affecting the shading there as soon as I add two or more levels, because these are shallower angles now, which means the auto shade smooth thinks, oh, I should be sm smoothing all these out together because it's a smaller angle. I think the only time that I would ever use the first method of adding more loop cuts to an object is this scenario where you have a cylinder. You've probably seen this before. If you make one side of a cylinder much larger than the others and then we shade smooth, you can still see all of these weird shading lines appear. Uh, if you try to add a weighted normal to this, uh, there's really no way to make this work nicely. Same thing if we use the set faces. So what I normally do in this scenario is I just add some loop cuts and that makes for a much smoother transition across this corner. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see about three hours more content just like this talking all about topology, you should check out my new course, The Essential Topology Guide. If you download it this week, you can save 20% on Gumroad. Alternatively, you can get it on the Blender Market. The course covers 20 different videos and all sorts of different topics, solutions to common topology problems, and just some best practices. Now, the point of this course isn't to teach necessarily perfect topology. The point of this course is to teach you how to fix actual problems that you'll encounter when you're trying to model things in Blender. I've been absolutely blown away by the response to this course so far. I keep getting really nice comments and emails from people saying that they found it really helpful. And I'm pretty sure it's on a five star rating on Gumroad right now. Check out the link in the description to get your copy of the Essential Topology Guide. And remember to use the code LAUNCH to get 20% off.